Throughout history, mankind has pondered our place in the universe. From ancient civilizations believing we were centered to it, to Copernicus developing the heliocentric model, then Galileo observing celestial bodies orbiting the sun. Fast forward to the 20th century, and it's radio telescopes like this that have opened up new vistas of discovery. The whole of human history is an attempt to understand the world around us. And the early attempts to understand the world around us were the things we could see with our eyes, the things we could touch with our hands, the things in our own environment. And as our technology has advanced, we've begun to be able to explore aspects of the universe that we cannot see with our eyes. Today, by combining optical and radio observations, we continue to uncover the vast and intricate tapestries of the cosmos, redefining our place within it. If you look at a particular place in the Milky Way galaxy with an optical telescope, you would see a blank field because there's so much gas and dust there that you can't see anything through it. You look at the same patch of sky with a radio telescope and you see a star forming region. You see births of stars and you see clouds of gas and all of this stuff that's completely invisible to the human eye. To me, one of the exciting and beautiful things about radio astronomy is that it often lifts that veil. Green Bank Observatory is a collection of telescopes. It is a, an astronomical facility open to the entire world. It is the largest fully steerable telescope. Instruments like the Green Bank Telescope are so sensitive, they need to sit in near radio silence. Green Bank is actually really perfectly located. So it's close by to some major cities and we're actually surrounded by mountains. And those mountains are really important because they help block signals from cities that are past them. Those mountains block out the signals and then we're able to make sure that we can keep an avoidance zone around the telescope for planes to try to make it the least likely path they'll take and really protect the quietness of this radio quiet zone. This is more than just beautiful countryside. It's a haven for radio silence. The National Quiet Zone is 13,000 square miles where radio signals are curtailed. And for 10 miles in every direction, there is no cell reception. If a cell phone tower were right next to the telescope and we were observing in that frequency, trying to look at a distant object, we probably wouldn't be able to get any science out of that object. Radio observatories have historically been built in the middle of very rural locations, right? You might say in the middle of nowhere, but of course it's not nowhere, it's a place and there are people living here and needing all of the things that they need. But if you look at places like the Very Large Array out in New Mexico or the Green Bank Observatory here in Green Bank, West Virginia, these are places that were chosen because of their low population density. And so in order to function, they've been located in these very, very radio quiet places. So when you're in the city, you have lights all around you from apartment buildings, street lights, and if you look up to the sky, you can't see stars. You'll maybe see two or three brightest stars in the sky, but you won't be able to see the Milky Way, you won't be able to see those faint stars that you can only see if you drive out to the countryside. And it's the same thing in the radio spectrum. Because our telescope is so sensitive, it can see very faint things. But those signals can be drowned out by man-made radio waves. The surface of the dish is two acres, and it is so sensitive that it can pick up a mobile signal all the way from Mars. The world is loud. You've got your phones, you've got television, you've got airplanes, you've got so many things that we, in our daily life, don't think of as loud. Your cell phone, you put it on silent, it's not loud. But in fact, it's really loud. For us here at the Green Bank Observatory, we can see that with our telescopes very easily. We're detecting signals that are literally millions of times fainter than the signal that a typical Wi-Fi or a typical cell phone would emit. The Green Bank Telescope studies a wide range of frequencies, which is one of our key factors. We have a lot of different receivers. So there are things called different bands in the frequency spectrum. There are a lot of different frequencies that we can study, and there are also a lot of different frequencies that are already used. So radio frequency interference, or RFI, is simply the signals that we don't want to see in our data. Anything that is not the signal that they're looking for in that band that isn't astronomically uh, created, then that is RFI. It does impact the science. We've lost, for instance, a particularly important spectral line of hydroxyl OH due to the direct TV, and we will never recover it. We're willing to sacrifice that small piece of the spectrum for the rest of the spectrum. And so it's really important that we keep this area as quiet as we can.
This telescope has state-of-the-art receivers. Even a small transmitter would overwhelm an astronomical signal. To collect those weak signals, you need the most sensitive radio equipment you can put on our telescopes. So the Center Development Lab is focused on developing low noise, extremely sensitive radio devices to go on our telescopes. There are 2,000 panels, all of which can be adjusted within a millimeter. So when you're observing big wavelengths, you have to have big diameters. So radio telescopes have to be big. We're on the edge of uh, several technologies in uh, radio astronomy. The new telescope, the observatory is building the next generation, very large array. We're building receivers and instruments of unparalleled bandwidth and sensitivity at those frequencies. There are very practical aspects to radio astronomy technology. The engineering required to build the receivers and the electronics that are uh, required for radio astronomy observations actually have spun off into commercial uses in many ways. So ironically, some of the same engineering and technology that powers cell phone towers and cell phones uh, and all the things that disrupt radio astronomy grew out of radio astronomy development. The difficulty now is that all of us, even those of us who live in rural locations, often need spectrum, right? We need to contact our doctors. We need to check our bank balance, right? All those things that are very practical uses of the internet. Those are things that didn't exist uh, 60, 70 years ago when these telescopes were situated in these places. The world has changed around them. To secure the future of radio astronomy in an increasingly radio noisy world, there is a proposed alternative, the radio dynamic zone. We understand that technology is here to stay and we have to coexist with them. The current technique here, or the current feeling is that radio astronomy carves out its bands and that no one can broadcast in them. But as the demand for spectrum goes up, we understand that we may have to share the spectrum. It is a compromise. It requires conversation and it requires understanding about the specific needs of each side. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish in a national radio dynamic zone. So uh, a radio dynamic zone would imply that there's this sharing of the environment. So we would have times where observatories aren't observing or they are not observing in certain bands, which means those can be reallocated to other um, commercial interests or other experiments. This kind of gives us a measure of how well can we prevent signals from interfering with one another. Where all of these systems know about one another and can sort of adapt and adjust in real time. That's the dream of a National Radio Dynamic Zone, is that it will be able to test and eventually pilot some of these solutions that can carry us decades into the future. The National Quiet Zone and the promise of a dynamic quiet zone are sanctuaries from radio frequency interference. They're instrumental in ensuring that these highly sensitive instruments can listen to the universe's faintest whispers without the clamor of human-made disruptions. We all would like to know where we came from, why the universe is the way it is, and how the universe is going to evolve. And that understanding of uh, past, present, and future is something that's essential to astronomy. It's an exciting time to be in radio astronomy and astronomy in general. The field is making uh, a lot of great strides. What most excites me is the opportunity for discovery. We as humans want to understand what is happening around us. and. The universe is the biggest lab we can do that in. We study everything from the moon out to the most distant galaxies and everything in between. So there isn't really a topic that we don't address. And you never know when the next important discovery is coming. We expand human understanding. So it's important for us to make sure that people know about this because if we stop, we won't keep learning. And for me, that's the most important thing. In this age of increased technological noise, it's important to preserve and adapt these quiet zones, not only to protect the investment into radio astronomy, but also to safeguard the future of cosmic exploration. <laughs>